What's going on guys and welcome back to the epic discus tank build, not the tank you can see behind me, it's this one over here. So in the last video you guys saw that we built a whole hardscape, again it looks weird at the moment, it will look cool when it's all joined in with all the plants, I deliberately left loads of gaps between sections so that plants will have places to fill in but not take up swim space for the discus because you know as we look down loads of swim space. Right, first of all, I've got to select the plants I want to use for this build. I'm not sure where to start. Should I start at the back? Should I start at the front? Low? High? I'm going to start with a short plant. So I'm going to fill in all of these sort of areas that touch and make them the sort of sprouty areas for like plants and things. I don't know what else to call it. You know, like for instance, I deliberately left a gap there so we can put some good plants in that section. Left gaps there so those plants go there. But obviously they'll be taller ones and then these ones won't be. So as many of you know, I've got planted tank plants only. <laughs> no livestock, it's just plants and some shrimp as well. But yeah, so whenever I get new plants, I just chuck them in these tanks. I say chuck, I, I still plant them because I'd want them to grow nice. <laughs> but yeah, I just put them in and then just leave them, forget about them for a good month or so. So I've been doing that to four sort of tanks out this section let me show you yeah so i've been doing it in this section here with all these different plants we've got loads and loads to choose from these are all epiphyte well they're not i just plonked that one in recently um down here we've got some nice ones as well this is mainly the tank i'm going to be using if i'm honest because there's some great looking ones there a nice sword in the corner we've got got some stigma loads of stems yeah it should look good so yeah i'm just going to jump straight in and just get planting straight away no time to waste let's go There we go, that's a really good start. I'm loving that, <laughs> it looks so good already. As soon as you add a little bit of green to a tank, it just looks so good, doesn't it? So what I wanna do next is just fill up the water a little bit, get some water in that whole section. It just means that I don't have to rush the next process, I can take my time with it and not worry about stuff drying out. So I was just gonna fill it up just a little bit and I thought, you know what? The foreground plants are in, I can add more, whatever, but I think it'll be better to add all the stems in when the water level's up much, much higher. I can see with their line. I just like putting stems in when the water level's up. That's a good amount of water, so this is taking a while, but we should be done soon. Right, that's enough of a water level. I don't need to go higher than that because otherwise it's just gonna be harder to get in and out. It's already quite deep to be honest. But what I wanna do now is just fit some temporary filters, like internal filters, just to keep that flow going around. Because obviously as I'm gonna be planting, dust is gonna be kicked up, all that sort of thing. So we just get that in there temporary and then it will stay nice and clear for the planting period section of time, something, bye. I think that's a bit of overkill. The flow on it is insane. It's such a powerful little internal filter that. I've used it before for my fast flowing uh, Infinity River tank that was like, went all the way around. It's so, so quick. If you look down here, even over here, it's blasting all the plants. I mean, it'll clear a tank up extremely quickly with how fast that flow is. Look at all those bubbles moving so quick, even at that distance. <laughs> <laughs> I can quite easily slow it down actually, I could just pack inside this section with a lot more filter floss and then that just reduces the amount of water coming through so I'll probably have to do that in a bit. I'll let it like go super clear first. Right guys, I've just got to stop the build for two seconds, this is super exciting, something awesome has happened. Even more babies now! Look at this, my epistogrammas that I made a tank for about two months ago. I haven't seen the female for a while and now I know why. 
Look at this guys, I don't know why I'm whispering. The fish can't hear me. So there's the female Pistogramma, and obviously that is all of her babies. Oh, they're babies, where's the male? Ah, there he is, right next to her. Okay, so I haven't seen her for ages. Look, just like with the, um, just like with the, why can't I remember you? Why can't, the cribs, the crebensis. Just like with the crebensis, whenever I come up close to the tank, the babies just stop, they drop down, they don't move at all. Oh my God, this is so cool. What's going on at the moment? Like, babies everywhere. Right, I need to make sure I feed the tank. I'm gonna use um, just like a flake that I normally use, but I'm gonna break it all up so that we get loads of fine particles going everywhere as well. I mean, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see her for a while and I knew she kept coming in and out of this section. So everyone said I needed to make a cave. So that's what I kind of tried to do, but with the, um, with the plants, if you like. So that area there I knew was enclosed in from the background because the sand comes up high and then was open in that section where she sat. Well, she's not sat, is she? Because she's a fish. <laughs> oh, so good. I've got three tanks now with breeding pairs in. Right, I definitely keep this all updated as we go, but oh, awesome news. Awesome. Oh, what's going on here then? So is this usual? Aggression between the two? No, no aggression. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm jumping the gun. Right, that's clear enough for our purposes at the moment. So next job, I want to start getting some stems into this area. The stems are going to go nuts. They're all going to grow really well. I'm going to have to keep on top of the trim and replanting. But, you know, this tank can also serve as, as a sort of a tank that can provide plants for future setups as well. That's what I'm thinking. I'm probably going to have to bring this light down a bit because once that lid's on as well and it's kind of steamed up, we're going to reduce the lighting quite a lot. But I have got the second light to go on if I need it. I bought a second one. It's not the same as this. It's got blues and reds and stuff. We'll just see how it goes once it's all in. But yeah, stem time. I want to fill out this whole area first. And I think I want to do like a whole hill of stems at the back. And then this whole section is where I want to put all the Amazon swords. I think it'll be a really good breeding ground. <laughs> Right guys, now we're really getting somewhere. It's starting to come to life, isn't it? It was uh, adding those sort of reds, which will be much more red when the water's clear. It will just be like super punchy. There's so much more to go though. I think next would be a really good time to put in the Amazon swords. So those guys are probably not gonna be happy whilst I'm like digging in there, but it's gotta be done, isn't it? Okay guys, I'm gonna need you all just to remain perfectly calm. Let that condensation drip off. Come this side and pinch this little one. Oh, no, no, calm, calm, calm. There we go. Nice. That was perfectly executed. I've got a gorgeous sword there as well. One. Right, next up. Oh, there's a Cory in here as well. Oh, that one's rooting very well. Look at these roots all coming out of it. Doing great. I'm going to keep the weights on them, I think, because they do well with them. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five, maybe five's overkill. I don't know, it's a big tank though, isn't it? Oh guys, I'm so pleased. That is, that's exactly how I wanted it to be. Like I say, a plain area. It's not plain, but you know what I mean? Like a solid color area there for just the swords. And then there's gonna be lots of detail and lots of different things everywhere else. And, oh yeah, cool. It's like, it's magical, isn't it? I love it, I, I really do. I'm so pleased it's turning out how I envisaged, envis, in, I'm not saying that. Envisaged, that's it, that's the one. <laughs> And as you all know, every MD planted tank needs pearl weed. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna keep it all in control though. So it's just one tiny area there. And I'll also do it in the other corner because you know, symmetry and things. But we must not let it get like the Asian fish aquarium, <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> Hey. 
everything is looking so, so good so far. So, so good so far. <laughs> Everything's looking great so far, but I want to add more sort of detail to the closer areas. And uh, basically there's enough big plants, I think. Like they're going to grow crazy as it is. They're going to go everywhere. And as they do, we'll trim and replant again so that it fills out all the sort of areas. But I want to put in some smaller texture stuff. So for instance, up here in one of my plant storage tanks, I've got some S repens there. Like, look at how good that looks. Now that has taken like two months, possibly more to grow that, that height from there to there. So it's, again, it's something that gives us some really good punchy colors, but it's not gonna be growing so, so quick. And all you gotta do is just snip it again and replant. So just like a stem plant, it'll grow and continue to grow, and then it'll grow more from where you snip from. And then also moving down into this tank, sorry, let me step back. This is uh, just like a cool green neon tetra, wild look tank. I love a wild look, many of you realize that now. But yeah, look at this plant here. This is Hydrocotyl Japan or Tripa 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 I don't know how to say it. Oh, hello really nice quarries there, Venezuelan quarries, Venezuelan orange quarries that one, yeah. And so yeah, anyway, what was I saying? So that's the Hydrocotyl Japan, I've got some there, and there's some there as well. Really good little textures to it, isn't there? Um, and it goes really well with that grass as well, the um, dwarf hair grass, which I might also add, but to start with, I'm gonna get some of that in. I've got loads over here. In this storage tank, right there, you can see at the back, so there's loads there to choose from. I won't use all of it because then it'll all be gone. God, that filter's making a hell of a lot of noise. I'm gonna fix that. So I think we're now looking really, really good. I think the next job should be to fill it right up. We can get our lid on then because I need to start thinking about where I'm gonna put the holes for the inlet and outlet for the filters. So apparently there was some concerns over the Perspex sort of doing this twisty warping kind of thing apparently a way around that is that if you flip it like it i don't know every few weeks or so or when you do your water changes and to do that then i'm going to make sure that i cut the holes right in the center on each side for the inlet and outlet and that way every time i flip it it'll you know it'll be mirrored it'll be the same so just do that now quickly So as you guys could see, I started cutting this with the Stanley blade and then remembered I had the uh, Dremel with some diamond discs there <laughs> and did it in seconds. So yeah, we've got a nice neat finish on each side. I could just peel it off and put it on now. There we go. I think the lid's looking really good. I love that. Um, I scratched it a little on one side. Oh, so annoying, that's the only sort of error. And now it's sort of smeary underneath as well, but I can sort that out in a minute. But overall, looking really good. Oh, I covered up the outlet for this because the water's pretty clear now, almost crystal clear. And it was just blowing so much, forcefully pushing water, whatever, <laughs> so much. Everything was going everywhere, but you know, that's just nice and still now. Um, almost there. All I want to do is add a load of more sort of detailed plants. Um, then I'll need to fit all the filters and then we can just put the fish in which I'll obviously do in the next video because it's way too much to cram into this one. So everything's looking really good so far. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I need to add a few details here and there and also we need to do a nice big water change because although everything looks crystal clear it's not because there's suspended organics in the water column just from planting, pulling sand around. Some of that nutrient layer that was underneath would have got through. It's in the water column. It's everywhere. Just drain it all out, fill it up again and it should be absolutely fine. Hopefully fingers crossed. What I'm really liking about the tank as well is that from the front view it gives the illusion it's packed full of plants but when you come to the side view because of how we push the hardscape right to the back of the tank it, there's still tons of swim room and I'm really really interested to see how the fish interact with that whole uh, Amazon sword shaded area. For some reason it 
it looks appealing to me to swim into, so I'm guessing they're gonna to wanna to be around that all the time. Hopefully it'll be an absolutely perfect spawning ground, maybe get some babies to survive this time. If not, whatever, you know, I just let nature do its thing. So yeah, quite a few things to do in the next video. We need to move across the whole filtration system, move across each fish as well. I mean, that's not as easy as it sounds because I've got to sort of match the water. I've got to change the filters and bring them across, and that temperature means it comes down in one tank, starts to go up in the other one. So we've got some hell meat in the other. I'm sure it'll be fine. So make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on for the next video. Add in the discus fish. I cannot wait. Ah!